my name is Dimitri, and here I'm as an uh, independent security researcher. Uh, last several years, focus of my interest is ERP security, especially SAP. I do SAP penetration tests, security audit, and ERP security researches. Uh, I do, yeah. Mathieu? Um, so I'm Mathieu Gelli. Uh, I'm a security engineer and a researcher. Um, the last four years, I uh, worked with Dimitri uh, by doing, like he said, uh, audits, pen tests on uh, ERP uh, uh, systems. So finding vulnerabilities in SAP Oracle technologies and uh, and uh, coordinating with the um, the vendors. Um, and uh, I'm uh, working for Sogeti, that is part of Capgemini in France. Um, so our agenda today is uh, to explain to you, uh, to give you a glimpse about uh, our research process uh, on to uh, uh, why we did this uh, risk specific research on SAP. Um, and uh, we will present a, a, a bit a word about uh, uh, the fundamental, uh, I mean, on what we worked, uh, the SAP application servers, and then we'll focus on specific components we found uh, issues um, so the gateway, the message server, and uh, we will present uh, new vectors that we can uh, uh, apply to get to compromise systems through these uh, uh, problems. And of course, uh, mitigation. So um, why this research? Uh, basically, uh, we noticed that during uh, audit pen tests at clients, um, we very often see uh, issues which are related to architecture and configuration that are actually uh, well known from the vendor that is SAP, um, but uh, the administrator sometimes uh, don't really know well the, the, the criticality and uh, the impact of uh, letting those uh, issues uh, on their systems. So we would like to raise a bit the awareness uh, about uh, those issues and uh, what ca what, how could it go wrong. Let's say. So uh, a second part is uh, we love to do to uh, uh, code in Python, and uh, we uh, uh, we had uh, fun with a specific Python library that is developed by Martin Gallo. It's open source, and we wanted to contribute as well on this library because it's the he implemented a lot of uh, SAP proprietary protocols that are now in the open with this library. So we based our work on this and implemented new stuff uh, over there over that. Um, and of course, uh, as we are uh, doing audit, pen test, and etc., we want to have like more bullets, let's say, to uh, uh, help us uh, during audit to compromise systems when other vulnerability don't work. Um, when we are speaking about SAP, actually, we we need to introduce some uh, acronyms that are uh, kind of specific and that could be uh, misleading. Uh, if you um, so. Um, just to introduce uh, for those who don't, who are not very uh, aware of uh, what uh, SAP is, that's a big uh, German uh, company that is selling uh, enterprise uh, solution uh, that helps uh, implementing business logic. It's like HR uh, processes, finance, uh, supplier uh, relationship management, uh, customers, and etc. So that's quite a huge uh, uh, servers and uh, complex software. And they have their all uh, acronyms like the AES. We will speak often about AES. That's an application server. So that's uh, where the um, uh, basically the business logic is executed. And uh, di different application server can speak to each other and exchange information via the protocol uh, they call RFC. So that's um, uh, the in SAP term. Uh, <laughs> I miss it. Um, wait, let me check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remote function call. Sorry, because there, are, yeah, there are, there are different acronyms that I are that are w can be misleading. Um, so they use this protocol to communicate uh, with uh, and uh, to exchange business information between application servers. Uh, there is the SID uh, denomination, so it's a SAP a system identifier that will group uh, several uh, application server, the database. Basically, they will share common resources. That's the, that's named SID. That's three letters. Um, and then uh, the what's exchanged, what's executed between those servers is some, some code. And the language used mainly is the ABAP language, so ABAP, ABAP, whatever. 
Um, this uh, specificity very quickly about this language that it is stored in the database of the server. Uh, the source code is stored actually and the uh, uh, bytecode compiled version as well. So that's a kind of specificity about uh, ABAP, let's say. Um, and then the notion of clients. Clients, uh, it's not like you know uh, in the uh, usual TCP uh, networking, uh, a client here is only on server side, is a way to segregate um, users. So you may find a client, for instance, here we see 000, and uh, then you will have uh, uh, some users, and then you will have client 001, and that will uh, separate those users. They, they won't interact. I mean, the resources will be uh, segregated via this information. Um, so, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah good start. Uh, before we go to the next part, we should describe you what is SAP Application Server, or AS. So, Application Server is a really important part of SAP. It's uh, that runs a business logic. And we could dedicate uh, two or three uh, different uh, uh, SAP application servers. It could be ABAP-based application server uh, that hosts uh, ABAP applications, Java-based, and the modern one is uh, HANA-based. Uh, but mainly what you find on premise systems will be SAP, ABAP-based system. Uh, anyway, uh, almost uh, all these uh, three application servers have uh, a different architecture, but at the same time, they have a common part. It is uh, central services like Gateway, Message Server, NQ Server, and others. That's why for our target for today, we choose SAP Gateway, because SAP Gateway exists on every SAP uh, installation on every environment because it, we need SAP gateway for communication between internal processes of SAP between if we want to communicate uh, with SAP with third party application and also gateway required needs for communication between two different SAP systems. So it's a one important uh, core component. That's why we choose it. So, as I said, uh, on this scheme or diagram, you can see that uh, different application servers uh, uh, could have different logic, uh, different work processes, but all communication goes through the gateway. So, and there, were, there was a vulnerability in SAP gateway that allows to trigger, that leads to remote code execution, actually. And how does it work? Because there exist two legit ways to execute operating system command uh, through the gateway. It is two uh, RFC function, functions. RFC exec that requires authentication and user, proper user rights for launching uh, command on operating system level. And the second one, SAP XPG, uh, that requires only uh, uh, record in ACL lists. If uh, we have empty ACL list, then we could uh, execute uh, operating system level commands anonymously without any authentication. So how it works. Uh, SAP user uses uh, uh, a proprietary, uh, uh, proprietary client, SAP GUI, and connects to the application server using login name, password, and client number. In, on application server, he runs a transaction, SE37, and starts uh, a RFC function, SAP XPG, and ask a gateway execute uh, who am I command on the system, and command will be executed. Okay. Also, he could uh, ask application server execute the same command, who am I, on the other SAD system, on other gateway, that do not have any link to the first one. And this command also will be executed. That means that there is no authentication between application server one of one of SAD one and gateway from SAD two. That means that we could somehow sniff traffic between these two systems and try to replace them, just sent from our attacker's machine. That's how we did it, and we successfully executed code on gateway without any authentication, without any problems. So, 
And as I said, this is well-known vulnerability. Well, the first mention of this problem was made maybe 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And, but the thing is that there is no proof of concept of this attack. There is no exploit for this attack. And this is bad because a lot of penetration test teams, I think, uh, met a lot of uh, SAP systems during their penetration test, but they don't have any exploits to compromise it and reach the goal. That's why today we're going to release two versions of this exploit. One of these just uh, recent sent uh, our captured pa packets, and the second one based on uh, reverse engineering of RFC protocol. So, and start with uh, just the simplest one that just replay our packets. It is we start with that because it's really easy. We just need to capture traffic between application server and gateway and resend it using our favorite languages. In our case, it was uh, Python. We just need to send four packets and change one dynamic variable inside these packets. It's a conver conversation ID. It's like a session number for eight digits of sessions. It doesn't require any dependencies. It's easy to code and works really fast. We can. Uh, exploit across the whole internet. And, but uh, this is a pros. Also, this approach has a cons because we just send raw packets. We don't know what is inside the, this, those packets. Could because uh, uh, it's really hard to maintain this type of approach because it depends on uh, uh, SAP kernel version. We probably sometimes could should change something in these packets. That's why it's really important to understand what is inside of these packets. And of course, SAP specific limitation here, if we try to get, uh, execute a command that uh, give us uh, a big output, SAP gateway, uh, encodes it, and we couldn't read it. We could execute command, but we can't uh, get the result. So uh, that's why we did uh, uh, reverse engineering of uh, RFC protocol, and on this slide you can see one of the pay packet. It's a first initial packet. We can see that we, sh we should send a version number, request type, IP address, some paddings, etc., etc. This is the smallest one, but the most important part is in packet number three of RFC protocol. Uh, it's a small part of the whole packet. You can see that, probably you can see, I don't know, uh, that here is we specify commands that we want to be executed on the server side. In our case, it is who am I? And a lot of, a lot of uh, different and important fields uh, on the bottom. So the whole packet structure looks like this. We have TCP for in the transport layer, NI, RFC, SPIC, TH and XPAG, and a lot of a lot of little fields inside. So, why did we do this uh, reverse engineering? Not just because it's important to understand; it also could be helpful for future attack. For example, if you want to do a fuzzing, you can fuzz uh, this protocol and probably find much more vulnerabilities in gateway and others. Uh, service of, of SAP that brings you uh, new vulnerabilities and remote code executions. So anyway, uh, this exploit requires uh, network access to SAP Gateway. That's why we scan the whole internet and try to find uh, available SAP Gateways. And we have found a lot that that's pretty bad because this is, should be internal service. Anyway, there exist United States, India, China, top three countries. Okay, as I said, this is well-known vulnerabilities, and that we still see these vulnerabilities on client side, and we and we use it for uh, for getting access into the SAP. So anyway, SAP fixes this fixes misconfiguration, and they start. Started ship, they ship now. Now they shipped uh, SAP with SAP Gateway with proper uh, ACL list. 
that say that SAP, now SAP Gateway executes uh, operating system level command only if you get this, uh, the packet from local host, from 127001, or from application server that belongs to the same SAD. So because uh, in one SAD system, in one SAP environment, uh, could be several application server that belongs to the one SAD. And if, if Gateway uh, get these packets uh, from the, this type of application server, he will execute it. It'd be internal, internal application server. So anyway, right after this fix, we thought, how could we bypass this? And the obvious way was, could we disable ACLs somehow? And we have, I mean, and we have found several ways. We have found three different uh, RFC uh, functions that allow us to change SAP parameters, profile parameters. But uh, we again here we have to have have to have a user account for changing profile parameters. So it, it works, but First of all, we should somehow get uh, an, an user account. The second way is become an internal. How could we do this? And there is a server service in SAP environment, SAP router, actually. Uh, SAP router, it is, it's uh, application level reverse proxy. That, and if SAP router, SAP router needs for communication, for example, internal, uh, internet users for having access from internet to internal SAP servers. So, uh, and if SAP routers, uh, uh, SAP router locates on the same machine, on the same IP address with uh, SAP gateway, then we could ask SAP router transmit our packets from the internet to the local host-based uh, gateway. And that's how gateway uh, will get these packets from local host IP address, and our exploit will be triggered. And again, we scan the internet, and we have found a lot of uh, SAP routers available for the internet. Yeah, that, that, that's okay. But the bad thing that this configuration when uh, SAP router and SAP gateway are located on the same machine, it's really rare, and we want to exploit SAP installations that exist by default without any credentials, without any access except network access. So we, we are trying to find another way for that. Okay, so that's uh, our transition to the SAP message server uh, that will help us uh, gain this uh, kind of uh, access. So basically, uh, uh, the message server is a, a central communication channel between um, uh, different uh, SAP instance, but um, not in the same way that the gateway. The gateway is used uh, to communicate and uh, uh, transfer like business information, something related to the business logic. Here, it's more like um, uh, like a IT infrastructure uh, within uh, SAP that will uh, help, for instance, uh, in case of load balancing, the clients will connect through the message server, and the message server will indicate which application server the, the client uh, should connect to. Um, or uh, another uh, use for this message server is an uh, information point where uh, every application server will publish its state to the message server so that it will be known between uh, application server. Like, I'm starting, I'm stopping, uh, I have those features to provide to the cluster and stuff like that. Um, so it sits in between uh, those two kind of application server. We see it's a common service, this uh, message server. Um, and uh, so those two features I just talked about, load balancing and uh, publishing uh, information um, about the, the application server is uh, basically split into two, uh, the exposure is on two uh, different uh, TCP ports. So the 36NN, uh, NN could vary between 00 to 99 basically, but uh, mainly that 36 something, that will be the public endpoints the clients will use to connect to and get their application server they want to have a graphical uh, logon. 
uh, the 39 will be internal and will only be used by the application server to uh, to exchange information, uh, operational information about the states. Uh, this internal port is where we will focus and basically it has a mechanism of uh, authorization through, uh, through a specific ACL file uh, in the same logic as the gateway basically. But by default, this ACL uh, contain host equal um, a star. So it means uh, everybody that has network access to the to these ports uh, could uh, speak and uh, and use the protocol to do something. Um, there is no authentication mechanism basically. So what's important here is uh, what you will do if you are able to speak to the 39 uh, ports. And that was uh, uh, our research, the, the core of the research. So uh, from a pen tester view, uh, if you are uh, auditing like SAP servers, you uh, fire Nmap on those specific ports, you will see something like this um, here. So we see the uh, public endpoint and the private internal that is available. We have a kind of uh, information disclosure on the SID, GRP, and the ID. Um, and uh, the host name as well is uh, communicated through, uh, through this port. We can get this information anonymously, basically, and that's with the help of uh, Nmap uh, enhanced uh, subservice probe we developed and published uh, some time ago already uh, on GitHub that helps you uh, to see those, all those uh, specific SAP ports and get a little bit more information anonymously, of course. Only. So, uh, if we look at the exposure, uh, internet exposure of these specific internal ports, uh, we see that there are quite some available. Still, we have our uh, big winners, United States, India, China. I mean, that's kind of logical. That's where uh, most of the servers probably uh, sit. And um, that's the same situation for on-premise servers. If uh, the 39 is very, very often, I mean, 99% of the time, we will have access to the 39 uh, port if the 36 is available. Um, that's uh, so that we decided to have a look at the implementation of this specific protocol, uh, and we found that uh, PSAP uh, is uh, implemented already something. Uh, so we took PSAP as a as a ground basis to uh, to do further research work. Um, so if we have a look at past issues on this specific message server, we will find uh, something like profile parameter read, write, uh, denial of service, uh, several denial of service, uh, potential remote code execution, uh, but without any, uh, I mean, the potential uh, remote code execution is not without any uh, proof of concept that will get you a remote code execution. It's only uh, doing a denial of service. So you can find, actually, if you download PySAP, you will find examples. Uh, in the examples directory, we'll find some proof of concept of, of uh, those previous bugs. Um, so our uh, here, our idea or assumption is that if we have access to this 39 uh, internal SAP message server port, we may be able to fake the fact that we are a new application server going up and joining the cluster. And with this, uh, we may be able, we may, I say because we need to check that, uh, we may be able to be seen as an internal uh, server among the, the gateway. It means that the gateway will trust us and we will be able to get back remote command execution on the gateway anonymously through the network. So uh, our ID to validate that is uh, based on a little uh, lab uh, setup with basically uh, we have uh, four application server split it into two SID. They don't know each other. I mean, uh, applications, additional application server one uh, is uh, known with a pr uh, primary application server one. They trust it, so each other. It's like a regular setup. And for the SID2, that's the same. So the idea is to uh, go on AES2 to stop the application server. Um, and then with IP tables, we will set up a uh, network redirection for uh, the network flows that should go from the AES2 to the PAES2, so regular network flow uh, MS uh, message server internal uh, traffic, and we will redirect it to the primary application server one. So on a totally different SID. And what we see is uh, the server is going up. We, we start up the AES2. Uh, there is a, a connection and uh, the, um, there's a, a proper uh, association to the message server of the primary application server one. And then the primary application server one will trust us 
AS2, and we will get a remote command execution uh, through the um, specific uh, RFC program uh, Dimitri just explained. So through the SAP XPG, we will be able to execute code. So that was a setup that is depending on uh, having uh, a SAP server. We don't want to have that during uh, assessment. We want to, to do exactly this logic, but in Python. So we will try to uh, simulate uh, an application server uh, starting up, associating to the message server, to the remote uh, victim message server, and uh, try to get uh, to the status that uh, the remote uh, gateway will trust us and we will see at internal and we, we can exploit the server. Um, so what we have is the PySAP library with existing dissectors. They already good, do a, a very good job, but that will be not enough for our uh, quest. And, um, and we, ha we have, of course, a uh, lab sub server, so we have access to uh, server logs. We will enable audits for, for all the components, like message server, gateway, dispatcher, working process, to get the most information we can get and reverse the protocol. So our roadmap is like this. Uh, we will uh, record a packet trust between our additional application server and the primary when the application, the additional is starting up and it will begin to speak in the message server uh, language, let's say. And during that time, so that's, I mean, recording packet trust, we fire TCP dump, that's fine. Uh, there is no, no work. Uh, and then in the meantime, we will loop uh, attempts to do remote command execution on the gateway of this primary application server. So we have our exploit uh, that we will publish. So okay, that's fine, exploit exists, we run it in a loop. We don't have yet results because uh, we are not trusted. And then we will wait until we are uh, trusted basically uh, and the association is, uh, is finished between the additional and the primary and then we locate the barely with time analysis, we will locate the packets that is interesting that uh, get us trusted. That's a bit of uh, a little bit of more work for do doing that and then we need to properly implement without any sub application server in Python the whole exchange to be able to replay it properly. So that's the hard part, let's say. Uh, so if we have a look at, at the packet trust, we have like 100 packets uh, that's flow down between our, addition, the, between our application servers. And um, we see that the, the first part is properly very uh, um, well parsed by the original PySAP. And then the second part is uh, totally garbage. So, and then we have the, this magic, magical packet at the end that get us uh, remote command execution. Um, so uh, we, uh, with the properly parsed packets, we learn a lot about the, uh, how the protocol is working with the message server. We see like that structure, basic structure when the packet is properly formatted. Um, and uh, we see that there are ADM administrative packets that are sent. Uh, we learn about there is a key that's no cryptographical key, but it's like a cookie for HTTP, a session tracking uh, between the client and the servers. Uh, and we see this kind of structure with the, the, the several layers like TCP, then there is the SAP NI layer. It's just four bytes uh, storing the length of the what's next, basically. But that, they call it the NI layer. And then we have the, the basic header of uh, SAP MS and uh, a list of records, of, in this case of ADM records. So that gets us the, the main structure of the packets. So uh, we see that some packets are not, to, not fully parsed, so uh, we fixed a little bit the, the library to have something like, you see the end, the end is not properly parsed, and then we understand that, okay, the, the, our client is sending information about his kernel, about his patch level, and extra if we fix the, the packets. So that's uh, minor issues, let's say. And then we see like, okay, there are biggest issues that the second part of our 100 packets. So these uh, big packets that are very strange, we don't understand, but we see this uh, marker, marker about the ADI catch in the end. So we understand that, okay, there is uh, like 512 uh, padding bytes. We don't really know what it's uh, about. And then we see that there is a kind of a end of a regular ADM packet. So our, uh, our goal is to uh, get, make sense of those 512 bytes. And uh, basically the reverse process is like this. We got the logs of the application server, we replay those packets, and we will uh, take all those bytes basically and we will change them incrementally by FF. 
So we will check in the logs of the server and sometimes we'll have errors like uh, I did not get your uh, this field, uh, the value is that and that should be not so greater than that or whatever that get us uh, information about how the server interprets those packed bytes, uh, how it's unpacked and what it is used for. The actually, uh, when the audit mode is enabled on the server, it's very, very useful for exploit development. They get us a lot of information. Um, so after uh, doing all this uh, tedious work, we get uh, information that, okay, those 512 bytes were actually uh, a kind of new layer that stores um, information that's basically um, worker process, as you see on the first application server, is trying to speak to the dispatcher on the second application server and going through the message server for that. So it's using the message server as a kind of footer. And uh, they will uh, ask, uh, so that's the, the information level of the, the worker process and the dispatcher that is stored on the 512 bytes. So from this, on the left side, we get with the, the reversing process and the new information we found, we get to the right side where we can, we created a new layer and we can understand and decode properly uh, most of the bytes there. So who are speaking to who and uh, what they are trying to execute or asking to execute some, uh, some commands and stuff like that. So that's that uh, the commands are still not OS commands. But uh, that's uh, this packet, especially the most important, because that's the one that fires just after this packet. We get remote command execution. We are trusted by the gateway. So um, basically, uh, what we now have is we can associate to a message server to the internal ports. We can uh, wait until we one of the application server uh, part of the cluster will send broadcast a packet that sends get me your IP list. Then we answer properly because now we uh, we can force those packets and uh, the remote server will will add our IP to the trusted list and then we can profit like it's the 2007. I mean the first time there was the problem with the gateway. So then we can execute code uh, anonymously because we are trusted and for in this case we run who am I on the remote server? We see we have a uh, OS user S4PADM and. That's basically the, the goal. Uh, what about testing on other servers? Uh, there are actually uh, a lot of different versions of uh, SAP kernels, and if you change your targets, you will see that that breaks. You need to do it again, this process of uh, parsing all those uh, padding bytes and getting, uh, but basically it's like one, two working days to implement each version because they have like slightly differences in the protocol, but it's not like huge differences when you got the overall picture, right? Um, so now uh, we will show you a little terminal demo. Okay, can we switch to the video? Sure. Okay, so in this case, uh, requirement is to have, uh, of course, the attacker needs to have access to uh, the message server internal port and to the gateway. Uh, so uh, on the right pane, we see we have uh, legitimate access to the destination server. We'll uh, uh, show you how we compromise. So we show you the configuration of the gateway is secure by default. So there is only internal that can uh, execute any transaction. And then we will uh, show you as well in the gateway logs the list of trusted IPs. So the ID is here. We have already some IPs because the server is in cluster with others. And then on the, on the left pane, we are in the attacker uh, host. And then we will loop uh, attempts to get a remote command execution with a who am I command. So we see that it's unsuccessful at the moment. We don't have any results uh, for this, uh, those attempts. So now we will launch our exploits. We will uh, associate to the message server uh, on the port uh, 39 something, 01 in this case. And uh, we will uh, begin to have an association and we will get uh, very quickly uh, one of the application server member of the cluster that will ask us, uh, give me your IP list. We answer to that. We got the, 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 the yellow packet. We answer to that. Uh, and then we have the remote command execution working and we have been added on, we can see the IP list and that's our client IP 280. So now we are adding an internal uh, in the trusted list and we can get a remote command execution on the, on the server to the, to the gateway. So that's, uh, that's all for the video. Yeah. Um, so the remediation 
uh, part is uh, basically SAP already uh, has uh, SAP not so uh, patches for those issues or it's not only patches but uh, just uh, uh, guidelines to explain to you how to design a, a, prop a secure ACL file for the message server uh, what are the good um, uh, what needs to be done to split uh, internal and public uh, port for the message server if you have a very old application server but b basically on new application server that's already done they have a split on the internal and uh, public and uh, additional measure is to uh, at the network level to get uh, firewalled uh, from out of the client those uh, access to the 39 that should be uh, uh, mandatory um, so we have a bonus attack because uh, by doing this research on the message server basically and, uh, and getting uh, an understanding about uh, the message uh, server protocol, we saw that um, uh, we can modify basically uh, load balancing information uh, in terms of uh, logon groups. So in SAP, when you use load balancing, uh, the client is connecting to the message server, asking to connect to a specific logon group like HR, FI, or whatever, and then uh, the server will, uh, the message server redirect it to the proper application server related to this logon group. What we can do is we can change the logon group uh, application server destination. So of course. I mean, of course, uh, what we want to do is uh, to do a mind the middle. We will put our IP in this logon group uh, destination for the application server. And so that the when the client will uh, legitimately connect to the message server and want to get their uh, sub GUI uh, access, they will connect basically to our IP. So we will uh, um, redirect transparently the client to uh, the legitimate server. And in the meantime, we will grab uh, user logon information. That is working, of course, only if the SNC, the secure uh, communication, <coughs> is disabled on the server. And as we can see during uh, uh, assessment, that's very often the case. Um, if, we, if you want to compare that kind of mind in the middle with a uh, level two mind in the middle, uh, here we are only restricted by the IP connectivity to the clients and to the servers. And you can find scenarios when from the internet you could implement this attack successfully. So that's, the scope is a little bit more than only a uh, level two uh, local network uh, mind the middle attack that's, uh, that are famous. Uh, so uh, just information about the, the packets that uh, allows you to overwrite the logon group information. So we see that uh, uh, there is information about the, for a logo, logon group is, here is space at the end of the packets and then uh, it's um, the destination application server and the ports uh, is defined after that so we can just overwrite this and uh, and we become uh, we become a, a new applica uh, fake application server so we have a little demo for that as well okay so um, full screen and so here again uh, we need to have connectivity to the clients and to the uh, destination application server uh, and the message server ports of course so basically uh, we are on the on the left the attacker side so we will just uh, monitor in read only the state of the uh, application se message server uh, storage that hosts the logon group definition and the destination application servers. So here we have a uh, HR sales and the default uh, logon group that points to some application servers. And then we will uh, launch our exploit. We say that we want to hijack uh, the HR logon group. Uh, then we will have uh, IP tables rule uh, set up to redirect the client's traffic to the legitimate application server so that they can get a logon uh, access. Um, and we will, uh, we will parse the packets they will, uh, they will send us. So at the right here, we are in a, a legitimate client, Windows client that is firing up SAP GUI and that will try to connect uh, to do some HR uh, maintenance uh, action. So they connect. Uh, use the uh, user password, uh, and uh, we got so they they have been redirected to us. Uh, we got the client's number, the user, and the password in clear text, and they got their uh, su successful logon because we redirected them to the proper application server. So that's that's just uh, yeah, that's all for this video.
Okay, so uh, again, remediation for that. So the uh, the three first remediation are the same uh, as the uh, be trusted attack. Um, the last, the additional uh, remediation we can add is uh, uh, try to enforce uh, SNC to secure communication uh, between uh, clients and the application servers. So that will render this attack uh, unsuccessful. We won't be able to uh, to decrypt anything. Um, about the detection, uh, if you have uh, if you you have a lot of logs or past logs, and you want to know if you have been compromised with that kind of techniques, you may um, uh, look at the if you have that kind of uh, audit level for the message server, so ms uh, slash audit uh, to one or two, uh, and you look at the file dev underscore ms, uh, you uh, you can see uh, attempts of uh, association of um, non uh, non trusted. Uh, un unusual application servers, for instance. Uh, you can, uh, at network level, if you have uh, network flows, uh, network logs, you can uh, check, for instance, access to the 39 from unusual clients. So if you remove the, the, the servers, the legitimate servers, you will see who's trying to connect to this port, uh, for instance, from the VLAN client. Um, then uh, you, you could uh, access the web interface uh, read-only web interface for the message server. Uh, that's the third point. Uh, and you will have information about the logon groups and the servers. So in this case, uh, when we do our attack, you will see that it's changing here. So you could monitor to this way as well. Uh, and uh, finally, the, um, for the SAP administrator, if you enter uh, the transaction, the T code SMMS, you will have information, administrative information about the message server state and the logon group and the etc. So that's the sub GUI way to monitor it as well. Uh, so uh, we deliver, uh, we, we, we publish code. It's still private, but we'll put that in, uh, in public uh, in a few hours. Uh, that's uh, every, everything that we show to you uh, is on uh, GitHub, will be available to those uh, links for, for pen tester. I guess that may be helpful. Uh, a little warning, uh, maybe you should be uh, careful not running that on production systems, that there may be some issues. The code is quite, uh, let's say, that's proof of concept. <laughs> so, uh, and that's basically that's all. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer.